But my name is Brandon Roberts. I'm a senior software engineer, and you can follow me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts. And I'm Mike Ryan. I'm also a senior software engineer, and you can follow me at Mike Ryan Dev. So today, we're going to be taking an app from inactive to reactive. And if you want to follow along, you can follow us on Ingerx. It's a community project started by Rob Wormald. We build small reactive libraries for Angular. So we look at what are the hard problems when trying to build reactive applications and how can we build small, concise libraries to solve those problems. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to share state across components. We don't want to use inputs to share the results. We want to go outside of the input tree and share results so that those mid-tier components don't have to even think about the books. So that's where the first library that we're going to talk about comes in, NGRX Store. It's an RxJS powered state management container for Angular apps. It's inspired heavily based on Redux. And the way it works is we're going to have components and when the user interacts with these components, we're going to take those events and we're going to model them in a consistent way using actions. We're going to write a reducer function today that takes those actions and reduces them into state. We need to move on to the reducer. And this reducer is a special function. It takes in the previous state and an action that we're going to dispatch and returns the new state. And while it's a simple interface, I want to point out a few gotchas when you're building this. The first, when our application starts up, state is going to be undefined. So this reducer function needs to know how to initialize state. The second is it always needs to return a new state object. It needs to be pure in that regard and return an immutable state so that we're not mutating previous instances of that state object. We also don't want to write one reducer for our entire application. As we build complex applications, we're going to have a lot of state to manage. And if we try to do that in one reducer, that would get unwieldy really quickly. So NGRX Store abstracts away that application reducer. And instead, we're going to delegate state and actions to child reducers that only work on one piece of the state. So today we're just going to do the book reducer, but as we might expand this to add authentication and layout in the future, we could add new reducers to manage their own individual slices of state. And you can think of these sort of like tables in a database. So when they create their state, they're going to be aggregated into one large state object called the application state. But now we need to inject the store service into our components to bring it all together. The store is a special service and it's an observable of our application state. It has one special operator, the select operator. Because we have one large state object, components are only going to be concerned with some small piece of that state object. So select takes a function that allows you to select that part of state and it returns an observable of only changes to that piece of state. It also has a dispatch method and this is how components are going to dispatch actions to the store. You use this, it's going to be easier to test. Well, how do we actually interact and test with this application? And that's where the NGRX Store dev tools come in. And these are developer tools for NGRX Store. And the way they work is we're already modeling this application as a series of changes to state via action. So it gives us a time travel debugger where we can go back in time to an individual state, inspect what changed, and see what action caused that change. And it gives me an interface that I can use to see what the state of my application looks like. In the beginning, we, we talked about having an initial state. So we see our search piece of state and I can see that it's an empty string and it gives me a list of, an empty list of results. And once again, I have more actions that's been dispatched. Now, how do we do time traveling? Well, as you saw in the slide, we can use the debugger time traveling to see what my state looked like one state ago. I can also go back to the beginning of before I even initiated the search. Thank you.